To navigate in Excel, the easiest way is to use the scroll bars. We have a horizontal scroll bar, which will allow us to go right and left, and a vertical scroll bar, which will allow us to scroll down and up. At either end of the scroll bars, you will also see small arrows that allow us to make smaller movements. So for example, I can click here to move up one row at a time. Using the scroll bars, however, is not always the most efficient method. Sometimes it is quicker to use our keyboard. For example, we have four arrow keys, which will allow us to easily move left, down, right, and up one cell at a time. If you need to make bigger movements, two really useful keys are the page up and page down. What they do is take us down one screen's worth at a time. So you can see at the moment, I'm on row 562 at the bottom here. If I press my page down, you can now see 563 at the top. And if I press page up, I'm back to where I was before. One super useful shortcut is the Control Home button. Press it, see what happens. Control Home takes you back to the beginning of your spreadsheet. And in a very large spreadsheet, that can save you a lot of time. You may also wish to navigate to different sheets within a spreadsheet. If you have a look at the bottom here, you'll see I actually have three worksheet tabs and each of these is a different sheet. To move between these, simply click on the appropriate worksheet tab. And I'm going to move to Sales 2016 now to look at selecting data. To select a single cell, simply click on that cell. And it's a single click, not a double click. This cell then becomes the active cell and you can recognize it because it's got a solid border around the edge. If you wish to select more than one cell, click on the first cell in your selection, hold your mouse down and drag to the last cell. You will notice that they all become highlighted except for the first one that you started on. Don't worry, that is still part of the selection. Be very careful, however, when selecting that you make sure you have the big white cross. There are three icons you need to look out for. The big white cross is your select icon. But if you come to the edge of the cell, you will notice you get a skinny cross with black arrows on the edge. This icon is actually your move icon. So if I click and drag now, what it has actually done is move the data. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Don't panic. Nearly every mistake in Excel can be undone just by clicking on the undo button on our quick access toolbar. So I'm going to do that now. The third icon you need to look out for is a little skinny cross with no arrows. You get this when you hover over the corner of the active cell. This time when I click and drag, it looks like it's selecting, but actually it has copied the data. Again, that's not what I meant to do. So I'm going to undo that. So remember when selecting, you want the big white cross. To select an entire column of data, you can simply click on the appropriate letter. So to select column C, I click on the C. You can also select multiple columns. So let's say I want to go A to E. I click on the A and hold down and drag till I get to the E. And of course, you can do the same with the rows. So to select row five, I'm just going to click on the number five. Between the row numbers and the column letters is a funny little corner. And if you click on that, you select your whole spreadsheet. Nice and easy. Sometimes you want to select larger sets of data and clicking and dragging can be quite slow. So another option is to click on the first cell in your data set then hold the shift key down and click on the last cell. And that will select everything between your two clicks. But wait, there's more. An even quicker way of doing this is to click somewhere in the data set and then use the shortcut Control A. Control A for all. Very nice and quick. One last thing. Sometimes you need to select two sections of data that are not next to each other. We call this non-contiguous data. So let's say I want my account managers and their Q4 results. 
I start by clicking selecting my account managers. But if I now try and select my Q4 results, oh dear, I've unselected my account managers. So let's try that again. I'm going to select my account managers, but this time I'm going to hold down the control key and then select my Q4. Excellent. Now it's your chance to give it a go. Sean is now navigating quite comfortably around his Excel workbook. But when we have a really massive workbook like this, it still does present a lot of challenges. And one thing that can help us are some of our view options. We'll start by looking at the bottom of the screen on our status bar. We have a small tool called a zoom slider, and this allows us to quickly zoom in by clicking on the plus, zoom out by clicking on the minus, or simply drag the zoom slider to get to exactly where we need it. To the left of the zoom slider are three view options. We are working in normal view, but to the right of that you will also see the page layout view. This gives us a good indication of how the Excel workbook sits on the page and is useful when we come to print. To the right of that is the page break view, and this is very good for getting an overview of a large worksheet. For the most part though, we will work in normal view, so I'm going to click back on that. Coming up to our ribbon now, I'm going to click on the view tab. You will notice a lot of the tools we've just looked at, like the page breaks views and the zoom tools are also available on the ribbon tab. If I needed to quickly zoom in, for example, to 100%, I can just click on the 100%. If you find that tool really useful, don't forget you can always add it to your Quick Access Toolbar. So I'm going to right click and add Quick Access Toolbar. There are also several checkboxes which will allow you to turn off and on some view options. For example, if I'd like to hide my grid lines, I can untick grid lines and they're gone. Usually it's easier to work with them on. One tool which can be quite useful is the split. This allows us to split our screen so we can view different sections simultaneously. I'm going to click near the middle of my screen and click split. And where these grey lines have appeared, my screen has actually been split into four sections. I find this a bit difficult to work with, so I'm going to double click on the middle split to remove it. I now just have a top and a bottom and if I wanted to see some data at the top and compare it to data near the bottom I can come to my lower scroll bar and scroll down till I get to near the bottom and you can see I look at two different sections of my screen simultaneously. To turn the split off I can double click back on this line or come back up to split and click it off. Now, while the split is quite useful, even more useful is the freeze panes. Sometimes I want to be able to simply scroll down or scroll across and still be able to see my headings. And you can see at the moment I can't. So I'm going to bring this little scroll bar back up and I'm going to come to freeze panes. If I click the drop down and say freeze top row, it sounds good, but you'll see it's only frozen the top row, which doesn't really help me in this situation. So to turn that off, come back to freeze panes and click unfreeze. Now what I actually want to be able to do is freeze the top three rows and my first three columns. The trick to this is to click in the cell directly right and directly below the columns and rows I want to freeze. So you can see I'm below row three and to the right of column three. I now come up to freeze panes and I click freeze panes. Some faint black lines have appeared but you'll notice now when I scroll down my headings stay fixed and when I scroll right my three columns on the left also stay fixed. And again to turn freeze panes off back to freeze panes and unfreeze. Now the last quick option I want to look at is the option to switch windows. 
This is useful when you have multiple workbooks open. So let's get another workbook open. We've up to now looked at file open, but I'm gonna press Control O, which is the shortcut, and I'm gonna choose W101 VO2 Select and Navigate. We are now looking at a different workbook, but what about if I want to get back to the one I was working in previously? I come to my View tab, I come to Switch Windows, and I now have a list of all my Excel workbooks that are currently open, and I can just click to switch. There's also a useful shortcut key. It's Control F6. So I press Control F6, and you can see that quickly switches me between my open windows. So there are some view options to help speed up your workflow and make it easier to work with larger workbooks. Get in there and have a play.